So today we celebrate Holy Baptism, which is one of my favorite times of the year. The truth of the matter is, almost every time is my favorite time of the year. I, I love what I do, I love being with you, it, but baptism is a special joy. Sometimes I get to baptize little tiny people, and sometimes I get to baptize big people. Who's our, uh, Karen, where are you? Here, here she is. This is, Karen was just baptized a few weeks ago. And you know, the thing about baptizing big people is that they understand what they're, they're, they're taking on, right? But the thing for me is that it's hard to carry them. It's hard to hold them. It's really bad for the back. So I love the little tiny people because I can hold on to them and kind of envelop them. And I get to hold them as I, toss water all over them and get them wet and they make faces like this. Ah, it's fabulous. Baptism is the most important time for the church, especially for a church like ours that is growing and is going through transformation, Easter transformation. It is a reminder that it is not the hope of the world that we put our hope in. That hope is a beggar. Instead, it is the hope of Christ, the hope of love, that love wins, that we put our hope in. I love these Easter readings, too. These Easter readings are delicious. They tell us the story. It is our story. They tell us the story of the early church. Those folks, just like us, who are trying to figure out how to follow Jesus when Jesus has been resurrected and has shown himself and has spent some time and then has gone on to be in the heavens with the Father, whatever that means, right? But is no longer physically with them. But they've been given the Holy Spirit and they have to figure out a way in this troubled and crazy world, because that's what it was like 2,000 years ago, just like it is today, random acts of violence that cannot be explained. And moments where we are at the end of our ropes, where we don't know how we're going to go on, how we're going to make it to the next day. That's this story of these people at this time, 20 centuries ago. It's our story. But these people are living out this newly birthed community of Jesus post-Easter, post-resurrection. Or at least these people are the story of our forefathers and mothers who in faith, on the one hand, braved an Easter life that was dangerous and demanding. Life today living the reality of a living God that gives us hope is dangerous and demanding. Stephen demonstrates that Easter faith as the church's first recorded martyr. His witness powerfully collided with the powers of religious establishment, political establishment, and tradition that would cover their ears in response to this new life being announced and enacted in the world. And little Jude Poppy, whom we will baptize today into the household of God, she represents that new life as it continues today, 20 centuries later. That same beloved community as it leans into the 21st century church what will that look like? We don't know, but we know we go there with God. So the question, will we cover our ears? Will we cover our ears and impede the Spirit as she draws us into a new age, a new Easter life, where she is doing not just the same old thing, but she is doing something new and something in us? That's the question. Well, today we can affirm that we will go with her. Because today, we will baptize little Jude Poppy. So baptism, a little bit, a little primer on baptism. Baptism is full initiation into the household of God. Full initiation. Nothing else has to happen after, though it can, but formation is essential. Baptism is not fire insurance. Let that sink in. 
And it is not something we do alone. It is not something we do alone, but it is something that God does with and for and in us. It is the mark of new life. Baptism is just the church's way of catching up to what God is already doing in Jude Poppy, in the life of you and me, and through Jude, in the lives of Megan and Amanda, and their lives changed forever. Yeah, that's worthy of, of applause. Because <laughs> that changed life is fabulous. Her baptism also represents what God is doing in our lives together as a church, as a beloved community. It represents our hope. Not that the church is necessarily growing, talking about the church broadly conceived, not that it's necessarily growing or that its demographics are getting any younger. No, it reminds us of something so much more important, that God continues to be with us. That is the very name of God, Emmanuel, to be with us, no matter what. Even in the midst of this troubled and unpredictable world, we can take that to the bank, that God will be with us. It is our assurance that the truth of God's love for us and our world does not transcend its context, but transforms it. The truth path of love is not liberation from our world, but liberation in it. Or as Hunter S. Thompson, the author, once put it, the truth that this is the real world, muchachos, and you live in it. So make this world a love-spreading, difference-making place. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, Jesus says. There is plenty good room for everybody in my Father's house. Just not yet here on earth. Where we are reminded that God's dream and our aspiration that God's kingdom will come and God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven, not yet is our reality though we get a glimpse of it today in Jude's baptism. Last week at a gathering of a fundraiser for the Conejo Compassion Coalition, which is um, a foundation that was started about 15 years ago out of this very parish by Bob and Shirley Bland and so many others in this congregation about helping those who need our help, about helping and empowering and equipping those who need a little assistance and help in our Conejo Valley and beyond. In this gathering last week of friends and supporters, we heard from Denise Cortez, the executive director of Harbor House. Harbor House is a nonprofit organization that works directly with people who do not have housing, who are the people that live and serve and work, our neighbors here in the Conejo Valley. And she shared a startling fact, not about God's house, but our own. She told us that when the Conejo Valley School District class of 2023 seniors graduate this next month, including my own daughter, Amelia, 46 students will walk across stages at our local high schools, will receive their diplomas, only to go home to a car where they will sleep their graduation night with their families. Forty-six young, talented people in our verdant, beautiful, abundant valley. Forty-six young people with promise and hope for the future for whom the reality of plenty good room for all is not yet God's kingdom come, but the reality of a worldly kingdom, one 
devoured by greed and anxiety and violence, where there aren't enough dwelling places for even the least of these. Enter Jude Poppy, full of that same hope and promise the embodiment of that Easter life to which Stephen was witness 2,000 years ago. And Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Enter this beautiful and beloved community of love-spreading difference makers who wholeheartedly embrace her this day as one of our own, as Christ's own forever committed this community, to proclaiming by word and example the good news of Jesus that everybody's in, that everybody's loved, and everybody has value and deserves dignity because God says so. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Enter this church into the world, devours as it is, by its own brokenness and hopelessness, dedicated to seeking out, seeking out and serving Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as Jesus first loved us, as we strive for God's justice and peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled, church, because enter you and me as we follow the one whose name is God with us, who shows us the way, how to respect the dignity of every human being and walk humbly with God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in the power of love. Believe also that we will do greater works than these because of the power of love to transform the world. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And indeed, he is, in my experience. And we have seen that truth in our own lives. We have felt it in our own hearts and acknowledge its presence today in this little bundle of hope, Jude Poppy. We also believe with an ancient and immediate faith that the truth of God's love for us and for the world does not transcend our context, but it transforms it. The truth path of love is not liberation from this world, but liberation right now and here within it. So let us join with Jesus in being that truth path of love who together with God does not seek to transcend this broken and anxious world, but witnesses powerfully to the love and trans- that transforms and liberates from within it. Here's how we'll begin today. We will take action by doing this. We will dedicate today's loose offering. That is, cash and checks given outside of pledges and tithes to Harbor House to specifically support those young men and women who will graduate this June who have no home to go to. If you can, give generously. All that you give today, outside of pledges and tithes and regular offerings, will go directly to Harbor House and will go directly to helping those people in need now. Right? Right? Amen. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not going to preach here. But let us be witnesses. I'm going to preach just a little bit longer. (laughs) Let us be witnesses to the transforming love that will not rest while our children, our children, sleep in their cars at night. Let us be witnesses to the joy and hope of the Easter life that we affirm today in little Jude Poppy. And let us be witnesses to a loving community that welcomes all, that feeds all, that blesses all, and labors together with all for the liberation of all, so that we may declare in our own time, look, we see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And his love transforms our world. Can I get an amen? Amen.
Now back to our regularly scheduled programming.